see on out of right. And I tell you, you know, when I was getting ready tonight, I thought, man, I wish I had done these for the time change. I don't know what it is about coming out here at 6 30. It's kind of a, yeah, you know, it's dark. It just kind of just takes the wind out of it. But, guys, we're just saying, uh, glad to be here tonight. I had state representative from Pickens County, Jordan, and part of Jordan, and uh, a little bit of our time right now. And so I was given the responsibility to redistrict, come up with a division of people in our in this recent division that was voted on last, last election. I was stuttering. I was thinking Bob Jones would be here, but tonight is the teacher of the year uh, banquet. So I think everybody, that's even my wife's there, but I'm here because you know, I think it's important to get this out and, and let people know what we're up to and why, how we got to where we're Kind of mad came up with. If you have a question, as we go through, raise your hand. It's going to be very informal. I uh, just want you to try to answer your questions about how we went about doing it. Uh, got lots of maps and figures, and I'll try to explain them the best I can. So if you don't if I skip over something, because I'm familiar with it, it might just not say all I need to. So please interrupt me and just say, hey, what do you mean? I don't understand this. And uh, we'll keep moving. Now, all I'm dealing with really is the, is the redistricting part of it. If we have any questions about the, the actual governance and how the thing works, Norman's here from the county government. And he knows a lot about it. He can help me answer some of those because I sure don't know all those answers. But we also have people here from the CAC committee. And who are, who all was on it? I think four, these four folks right here were on the, on the committee that got down to the hard business of coming up with a, how many page document is it? The bill is like 36 pages long that covers the functions of county government. So they worked real hard on this, and I thank all of you for, for, for your time, because that's what a lot of this is. I'll try to sit still so that we can videotape it. You'll have to keep following me around. But when we remember when we voted on it, we voted on three person. That's a county commission chairman who covers the entire county. Voted on by all people in the county. It's also the county manager. You know, it's a strong form of government right around him. And then two other districts. And that's the right of anyone and that has to be equally divided. So that's what I was given to try to work out with, with Commissioner Jones' help. So we went through a lot to get there. And we'll tell you how we got there as we go. And you know, we just went through redistricting in the state of Georgia through this past legislative session that was in office. And one thing I found out the year that I've been in Atlanta, I knew it before, but it became very apparent, we have a vast state. Lots of different people, lots of different interest groups, a, a myriad of issues that, that are just intertwined. But it's a cool state. And I've, and I've been all over it the last year, and I think it's really neat. You know, it, it is a tough deal to go from to divide the congressional districts up, a hundred, well, how many of us, all the 180 of us, 50 something Senate seats, the personalities that are involved in it, and the needs of the communities that we represent. So it's a tough deal. I know we went at it with very firm orders from the leadership in the House, the Senate, the Governor's Office to make sure really three key issues. One that it was that we would listen to people. And to do that, well, they went across the state at 10 different meetings across the state of Georgia listening to the constituents. I went to one in Carbsville, Gainesville, and Dalton that I went to just to listen. I, of course, didn't go to South Georgia, but you know, we did this. They had a great website where people could put input in if they couldn't make it to one of these 10 meetings. That was the number one thing. The other was to be fair and constitutional. And I think the constitutional part of it, you understand why we're doing this, is that we have a census in the Constitution way back when it was very wisely written many years ago. We've got to count everybody and redistribute representation based on votes. One person, one vote. Did a great job doing that. So we counted everybody. And I think making sure it's fair, that's one of those things subject to everybody's interpretation. But I think they want to make sure we listen to people and it's constitutional. And I felt real good about the product that we came out with 
in this 2000 past session, 2011, of redistricting compared to what's been done in previous redistricting attempts. And, uh, and what we found out, as we'll show you, is it's pretty high tech, how we do it now. I also throw this little slide in here. This is a, a group of people. These are three people, these three ladies, and there's about six others of them. We're from northwest Georgia. That's Dalton Murray County. So what they were doing, they worked on the congressional redistricting map. Their own selves. They came up with a proposal, she's right in the way of it, of what a great what was turned out to be the 14th district should look like a Northwest Georgia district. They worked, they did their numbers, they came up with the districts all across the state, and this is just eight people working without access to all this great technology that we use, and worked hard. They went door to door in the capital, they spent with the governor, all the different leadership. These eight people had every county commissioner in northwest Georgia, you can see just a little gallop of it, I agree to it. That that would be a great proposal to have. Because we're all very similar. Well, they almost succeeded. I was talking to one of the guys earlier this morning about it was on this. Well, they almost were very successful in doing it. But they didn't get Bannon, Pickens, and half. A Bannon's going to work half of Pickens in the 14th. You know, half of our county's in the 9th. So are Bannon and Gilmer. But they, they got everything they wanted except that. Unheard of. But that, the reason I say that is that people's influence can be heard in that great goal done if you want to work at it. Now they spent a lot of time. They went to every county commission meeting in Northwest Georgia. They did a lot of work. But that lot of work really kind of solidified what is Congressman Graves' district. He'll be running for the 14th, but they did it on work. They weren't caring about who the representative was going to be. They wanted a geographic area that had similar interests. That's what they worked on very, very hard. So I took my hats off to them, and my, this is my comment to you is that you can have an effect in policy, and things that go on have to go down if you want to get your time. And then and, and, and people do. Okay, so when Mr. Jones called me early in the summer, said, oh, why don't you start working on this? I knew I needed to because you know, this is quite a process. When we get through here, we'll submit our plan to uh, county attorney groups, the Justice Department, to have it reviewed. You know, we're under uh, a voting rights act. Slip my mind. And so everything we do has to be observed and looked at to make sure we're not discriminate against any group. So that all of us go to the Justice Department. And it takes time. And we certainly want to have this done for qualifying for this, these positions, I believe, which is in late April, some more time like that. So it takes some time to do all this. So what I did, of course, I've never done this, like none of us in here have never done this. So I called the uh, Joint Reapportionment Office. There's a House and Senate Reapportionment Office that's housed in the office building that I'm in at the Capitol. And that's their goal, is to work on reapportionment, redistricting for congressional, House seats like mine, and all the way down the school board in the cities. They do it all. It's a pretty good sized office. You know, it grew a lot, and now it's shrinking back down. Uh, when you call down there back in July, you talk to one person now, that person doesn't work there anymore. So they kind of built up, and now they're shrinking back down to their day in, day out thing. And one of the things they do is help counties and school boards and school districts and cities redivide like we did here. I talked to Chairman Lane. I said, you know, Chairman Lane, I've never done this before. How should I go about it? And he, we sat down and came up with a plan. And these three meetings are part of that plan. Where we, and it's been a lot of trouble, but we got folks together early on, and then now, these three meetings. To tell people what we were doing, to be open, be, be communicated. There's no secrets. It's a pretty straightforward process. And so we're following Chairman Lane's plan. You know, the basic thoughts when we sat down, you know, Commissioner Jones, is I wanted to have the same idea as that 
I was given back when we looked at congressional and our House seat, three, you know, three apportionment. That's fair, constitutional. And the third one I added is easy to understand. That if you're sitting in your living room talking about which district I am and go, oh, I'm in the east, west, north, south, one, two, whatever. It's easy. And I thought that was good because it's going to be confusing as we show, as we get through this to talk to you about it. You know, when uh, I sat down with Commissioner Jones, I got him to recommend four people that we could take to Atlanta and just look at the process and see what we could come up with. I think we all agreed very first that we wanted to use a major road as a division. Not voting precincts or geographical areas, but just use roads. I mean, how can we use roads? Because everybody knows where they're at. They're easy, they're well defined. And our county is very fortunate that we've got north, south, and east with bisecting roads. And, uh, and it would just be easy. This is Shantae Bell, the lady standing up in the middle. And she got with us. She is our technology specialist, the reapportionment office. And it's her job is to sit down with folks who don't know much about it, educate them very quickly in the technology and what we're able to do and not able to do, and <coughs> go through the legal parameters of making sure we're doing it right. Here are Regina Kent, Gary Reese, uh, John Taylor, the commissioner, myself went down just and looked and listened to Ms. Shantae. It was very interesting. I think they're all amazed. And we're in one of the conference rooms that we have on the third floor where they can take you know, the computers and move the district lines and it immediately shows you the changes in numbers. Which helped everybody a lot. And this is a group that uh, Mr. Jones picked. Everybody's still smiling. So this is one of the early maps. If you go back We'll show you maps and then you try to lead you where I've got to. But the CAT committee came up with a map. And it kind of, you know, the best, and this is based on 2000 data. Now, remember, we're at 2010 under a, a census and a difference in population. But, Norman, how, many, how much did we grow from 2000 to 2010? You know? uh, a little over 8,000. A little over 8,000 people. And so, this is one they came up with. And so we are very uniform in our numbering. The west side is one always, or the blue, and the pink, the red is two. That's going to come in a minute. And so the neat thing about this, and you probably, I don't know that you can see this spot, but uh, uh, <laughs> get it back. I'll try to get it there. I'll have to move it a little bit. Yes. District one, but I'll, I'll show you, I'll explain what all the different numbers mean as we go across. District one, population under that original proposal that was done almost two years ago was 15,671. The deviation, that means the difference between one and two, was 956 people. Okay, so the difference between the one and two is 956, gives us a percentage. The percentage of deviation is important. Because it's got to be as low as possible. In our U.S. congressional seats, the deviation is 0.0001. And what I mean by that is that the difference between Tom, the 14th district that's coming up and the 9th is one person. The difference between the 1st congressional district and the 14th, one person. Plus or minus one. That's all the difference there is. So there's no deviation. They are that exact with the data that they're given. Now, when it gets down to mine, it's got to be less than, I think, I don't really know. I've never really found out. Let's say mine's less than 1%. So it could be, in my house district, it's 54,000 people. So let's just be 500, give or take, or more. As it, goes, as it gets less, Strategic, I guess, is the proper word. It can be a little bit more. Our goal, absolutely, was let's get, we've got to make sure we're below 5%. I think Ms. Shantae L said that was a very good number to shoot for. But we want to get it as low as we can because that way the, the districts are evenly managed or evenly populated. So that's what percent deviation is. Of course, they can have minority populations on the, the different set of them. 
can see it was hardly any, 153 and 1, 159 and 2. You know, uh, black combo means that there could be, it's a mixed race family of some sort. And they're all counted together in, to a total black population. One thing I found surprising, as we look across here, is our Hispanic population back in this past census, believe it or not, was significantly more than our black minority population. And uh, which is that it's about almost it's a little over 800. And we're down in our black minority is about what? 300. So that's one thing that's interesting. Now, this is the 2010 data, by the way. So our total population at that point was 29,431. Now, VAP means voting age population. And I don't know why they give that to us. It just doesn't mean anything to me or to most people. But just so you'll know, in that original, they were pretty close. But still, our deviation is pretty high. And it gave us somewhere to start. You know, but let's see, look, because you never know. Sometimes you always want to look at all of them and see what differences they are. Anybody have any questions? A lot of data's and numbers right now. Okay, so as we moved along, we said, well, you know, go back to my three premises, that third one. We'll make it easy to understand. Let's use a road. So we sit there, let's say, hmm, what's a road that runs through our county? You know, can we pick one that's easy? And we've got, we found out, and so we looked at what would happen if we go to Highway 515. Okay, well, what would we be lucky if 515 was the number that that it was. Well, <laughs> as you see, one, the West End, was short almost 4,000 people, or 26% deviation. And well, darn, we knew that. That wasn't going to go anywhere. But that's what I wanted to go about. I kept having Shantae pull up geographic areas to see what it would do. Okay, what if we looked at Highway 53, you know, it kind of snakes through our county all up and down, you know, from one end to the other. Now, it's a little different look. You know, didn't want to leave anything out. And we were surprised how close this was. I mean, I went, wow, what do you mean? If you look at the difference, and I just won't worry about it because you see now, the deviation was 6.3%. Meaning that, it's not 934. So one was to be more or less than that which was shocking to us. I was so very surprised that uh, it worked out that way. I mean, just, you know, when you just subconsciously think about this uh, district here, you would have thought that this one with Jasper and other areas would have been much, much bigger than it was. But it did what? And I think, as Norman was explaining to us earlier, there's a lot of small subdivisions in this region through here. You know, we usually don't go throughout the county. You know, I've got a county agent here going on all these little dirt roads. There are a lot of folks around, but pretty good population. So then we looked at, well, what if we took old Highway 5, another, you know, just long-term, long, good standing road. You know, it really runs you know, down by Nelson, through Jasper, on the outskirts of Talking Rock in the north. Then again, too, what we call the east side, 2,700 more people. Give us an 18.5% deviation. See, so right now you're sitting there, uh oh, so we've got to kind of figure it out. It's going to have to kind of blend in both of those roads. And so we're you know, kind of scratching our heads. So, with her help, This one, this is eight. And when we looked at it, we knew we had to kind of get a little bit of both. And this one being using old five up to the city limits and around, this is 53, and then following 515. And this, little, well, this little orange line does not follow 5, 515. This is not right. It's actually right there. We don't know why it's wrong, but it is. And so it's going 515 
five, and then this little blue area here. When, so let me show you the numbers of that, because that's what you want to see. It's 2.29% deviation. Could we get it lower? If we add, and we we'll jump back, this area right here, this is some, this is going up by 15, it's a very uninhabited area. To count this little area where my finger is brings in census tracts. If you've ever worked on the census, here you can count numbers in census tracts. And unfortunately, when the census tracts were developed for this area here, they did not follow the road. They go across the road. So they go over here, and this is some highly populated areas that mess it up. So we have to stay on the other side of that census tract. And this is kind of a, this is the only thing we really don't like in it. This is a little bit of a vague line here. It'll be defined in legal, legal description, so it's easy to do for them. But that census tract going in and out right there, we couldn't figure out a way to, uh, to do it any other way than that. And so this is what we call map eight. And map eight um, is, a, like we say, you've got all of Jasper, uh, the big living areas over here, Bent Tree, uh, you know, see Tate, Nelson, most of them are uh, talking about the cities are on the eastern side of it, and the other is not, in your Hint, Mudville, Jerusalem, Hill areas. Now, so remember, there's this 2.29% deviation. That means there's 337 more people on the west side, uh, zone one, than on the east side. Okay, so good question was brought up early on in during this. Rick, why can't we just, uh, and I don't have a real good picture of this, so we'll talk about this. Why can't we just have this, these divisions be the same as either a congressional division or a senatorial division? And I ran the numbers on them, and it doesn't work. Uh, this side is 18,000 people. This one's 11. So we tried to, you know, of course that wasn't going to work. But this is our congressional division. This is the 14th. This is the 9th. Uh, there's been a lot of, you know, I'll just tell you as we go along, a little conversation about it. We have always traditionally been in the 9th. I talked to Congressman Jenkins about it, and I said, you represented Gwinnett County at one time, didn't you? He goes, oh yeah, for years. You know, Congressman Landrum did too, from Jasper, you know, over to Gwinnett County. So what it's not, and so we're traditionally have always been in the night. We've traditionally been with this group of people. Uh, I think our affinity though is with the Congressman Graves, who lives right there on the Pickens County line in Ranger. He lives about a mile from the line. And this is the 14th, where the western side of our county will be alive. And this all the way down here to, uh, I believe that's Harrelson County. So very, and both of them big areas uh, to cover for any one person, for sure. But well, that's why we couldn't use the congressional one. Uh, that's not the Senate map. And here's the Senate map. And the Senate map is similar, though it has a little bit different. It jumps out and gets the Tate precinct. And this one was 15, and that was 17,000. 12,000, that's right. And so they weren't anywhere close. Not even close at all. So it kind of let us, you know, we're doing the right thing to use some roads to try to, uh, to pick out. And people always ask me what my district will look like next time. Of course, here's Pickens County. And currently, right now, I represent a big, giant hunk of Gordon County. Next time I'm going to be, I, lose, I lost a bunch of this for the next go round, and now I'm up in Murray, that's Carter's Doolittle, that's a pretty rural area up through there, but I also gained the city of Chatsworth. So you can call me sometimes, I'm driving on 411 on the Chatsworth. And, uh, but I, that's all we did. And so I'm going to jump back to that thing. And that's where we're at. So, questions? Yes, sir. So, so you're accepting two and a fraction percent difference. Yeah. It's less than what our initial thought is 
That's pretty low. It couldn't get any lower than that. Unless we started this going in and out of subdivisions and I don't think. It goes against our basic gut. Is we want it to keep it east. So we do it south right here. I know where I'm at. It's like we first came in here today. We just asked what roads are on, what side of the band we found at the side. Yes, ma'am. How does that relate to our voting precincts? It does not relate to voting precincts at all. So you can put the voting precincts as they are? Well, yeah, they are state as they are right now. Is that what you ask? In relation to this? This is no relationship to voting precincts. Um, we are not addressing voting precincts in this. You know, like, and so, and see, the voting precincts we have are unbalanced. There's some of them have much more population in them than others do. So you can't really, we didn't feel that, that was a good way to go about it. Uh, Rick, yes, would this be a great opportunity to consider re uh, resetting the voting district? That could be chapter two of this book. <laughs> We really couldn't do that and this at the same This has a timeline and... Well, no, but I mean, Austin County tried to limit the number of precincts to save money, and I don't think we can do somewhat the same thing in pictures. Mm. That's a whole, you know, we'll have to create a committee to work on right. that ridge, show you, because that's going to be a whole... There's no logic to the way they're laid out now. I've heard they're old militia districts or something. So. There probably is, <laughs> but there probably was. But you know, in my, you know, within my time constraint, you know, we're working. Yeah, you know, the thing about the, most, the districts really don't matter in this because we're not using them to select them. But if one side or the other, north or south, east, west. With this one, it's the east, west. They have to live there and they're voting off of that group. That's just good. Yeah, but how many voting districts get split? We looked at that. We, did you know that? How many voting districts were split? It's like four, I think. I think it was four. I'm not real sure. As you see, I didn't take that into account. Right? It goes back to only the easy to look at. And so, but the nice thing about it, you know, with the technology we have now, and the way of the law is, you'll get a voting card that will tell you. Because, because it's going to be confusing. I mean, because we've got a different, some people will be for one congressman, and congressional district, another, another Senate district, or another. Ah, oh, it's terrible. I promise we'll change that 10 years from now. But right now, you've got to live with it. So you'll get a card that will have which one you're in, and, and be able to define it for you. So, you'll know, so you can be educated and know which one you're in. It's going to be incumbent on us. To do a little bit of education on folks, especially on the congressional and the Senate, to get that right. That's going to be tough. Yes, ma'am. Who sets the voting districts? Pardon? Who, who will set the voting districts? The board of elections? Well, I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know anything about the law and how that works or anything. Yeah. I can't the answer that. <laughs> the board of elections. She asked who would, who would set the voting districts. He said the, the Yeah, it would be a big job because it will involve reapportionment. Because they have the computers to look at census tracts and how they fit into what we currently have and how we move and what it does. You know, it's kind of like the balloon. You squeeze it here, it comes out over there. Yeah, it's it'll, it's going to be a detailed deal. Yes, sir. Since uh, Townsend is going to be split, we go to vote. How many? How will we know where we set the vote? Okay. Well, you'll go. To your vote to the same place. Same place. But you'll just, when you're specific, like Rick Jaspers comes up, he'll say that I'm going to vote in the 9th Congressional District. I'll, he'll give me my choices. My choices, my choices. So the ballot will do it. Yeah, the ballot will do it. That's the beauty of the, of the computerized balloting. It, it'll be able to tell that for us. Will it be easy on those folks? Uh, no. no. It will not. And I, and I, and I back when when we were doing reapportionment, that was my worry when I saw that we were going to be divided in the congressional district. Then I heard we were going to be divided in the Senate district. And I knew this was coming. I just knew it's not good. I mean, you know, it's not. It's going to be tough. It's 
going to be a lot of confusion, I think, for a little while. But that's why, I guess, in my goodness, I wanted it to be easy. But this would be one thing that we go, I know, if you live on the east side of the Highway 5, I know you are. You know, that, I thought, went to the live in that. See, Lemons and Jasper area, I know where you're at. Well, that's the uh, I'm a country boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the way I look at it. So yes, sir. Lord City Lemons and Jasper River Delivery System. Oh, Lord, no, man. No. You don't know what the City Lemons and Jasper look like you say that. City Lemons and Jasper are all up and down Highway 515. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you go to the Sackets of the City Lemons and Jasper, Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Does that answer your question? Right. <laughs> 515 is the, you know, they go down 515 for services. Right. And you like sewer water. And, uh, things like yeah, that. Some yeah. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> There's a 15 yeah. mile, mile stretch of Highway 515 going from the southern end of the county, northern end. And the city currently controls 12 miles of the 15 How many miles? 12 of the 15 miles. Well, did you hear what he said? Come up and tell me. It's a little echo. Um, here, the distance from Cherokee Pickens Line to the Gilmer County Line on the north, as far as Highway 515 is concerned, is 15 miles. Here, here to there. And 12 miles of that um, is, and has been annexed by the city of Jasper over a period of years and different legislative measures. And so uh, the only portion really that the county has anymore is from, if you're familiar with Worley Crossroads, from there south to the Cherokee County line and from Antioch Church Road north to the Gilmer County line. That's the only portion of 515 that uh, Pickens County is, has jurisdiction on. Yes, ma'am. Just to be clear, that the circle that's down to the city limit side is becoming on the river, south of the Refuge Road. That's what that is? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can make sure. I was, before I answered that, I was getting that in my mind. Yes. <laughs> I think you're right. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? That is a, a serious question too. Let, let me ask a curiosity about the lack of roads in the strip there in the southeast area. Here? No, southeast. Lack of roads. Is, is that because it's part of or something? Is that alongside the creek? That's tight. It's like the road is tight as tight. It's rough as though. You don't know how rough it is? My son walked from uh, Episcopal Church to Highway 53 one time just to see if he could do it. He said he'll never do it again because it was so steep and up and down. That's why. I mean, it's just, oh, it's a great tale about Bob's trek across the mountain. His mom was worried. It took him all day. But it's real steep. Very heavy. It's hard to negotiate. Well, that's this part of it. I mean, well, we're glad we're here. We'll ask any other questions about anything else that you'd like uh, as far as it concerns me. But I appreciate everybody's time coming out this on this time. Y'all have another question. I asked somebody at another point this was how far you bring the information from the census bureau. Oh. And they said the census bureau can get you right on to house by house. But you would fly that it has to census tract by census. Oh, they know exactly how many people live in that census tract by house. But that wasn't available to you? Yes, but to divide this up, the legal definitions are based on census tracts. Census tracts follow major roads, but also um, voting precinct lines. So that's how you can use a voting precinct. They also they have some criteria that people have to follow. But right in this area right here, they did not follow anything. They never took into account how many 515 here. They, they just did They will this time. That's on our list of letters to send to make sure that they make things on the list. To come back in and look at our county and make sure the census tracts follow some of this. But you got a great point. 
And that we probably do need to come back in and look at voting precincts, get them balanced. Uh, that's something I'm consider, you know, I would love to do. I have asked the school board if they would want me to do that, especially for the school board ones. Uh, that's up to them to initiate. I've offered. Chris, the school board has something like the same situation. Yes, they do. And I've offered, and you know, they'll just need to uh, say, would you please do this, and then we'll start. Yeah, I can't tell them how to run their business. Yeah, you have a backup plan in the case the Department of Justice says 2.5% is too much? No. <laughs> They're not going to do that. I hope. <laughs> I hope not. You know, if you look at our, uh, the numbers on it, you know, they're pretty, you know, they're a pretty low percentage anyway. And I think, you know, it's funny how our county is sort of equally divided and all those. I know that this one's, there is a hundred person difference between these two sides and then the, the other one being Hispanic. It's almost identical, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's almost identical. It's 423 to 396. Yeah, just this little thing you find out about numbers, you kind of go, wow, it's pretty neat. Thank you. Okay, hope that happened. But I'll stick around, Norman and I both will. Uh, if you have any questions about how it works or whatever, Norman and I, he knows a lot about that. But uh, I'm glad to answer any questions. Good to hang around. Thank you. Thank you very much.